This is T again, and we're going to talk about potholes. And that's why you see on the screen here a great big old pothole close to my house that uh, drives me crazy because look how it's just being filled in all the time. Um, I, you know, I guess you can't tell from the picture that it gets filled in all the time, but can you see the different layers of, you know, there's a lower layer here and then another patch on top of it there and a patch and another patch and another patch. Well, I'm showing you this pothole because um, in this set of lessons, we are moving on to chapter 15 on weathering and mass wasting. And in this set of lessons, we're going to learn how the surface of the earth and sometimes deep inside the earth also um, gets modified through weathering or erosion or mass wasting. And so this pothole situation that I'm using as an example here is, um, you know, a, a, a lead in to our conversation about a process called weathering, uh, in which Things like water, for instance, can seep into these cracks that you see in the asphalt here on this road, and it eventually uh, fills in little pockets of water underneath. And when winter comes, let me see if I can find another slide. When winter comes, you end up with, um, going the wrong direction, there we go. You have snow on the ground and ice underneath these potholes. And when the, as we learned back in an earlier unit, I think it was way back in unit two, we learned that, uh, that water has different states that it, that it takes vapor liquid and solid and when it becomes solid it expands slightly there is a there is an expansion in the volume that water takes when it goes from liquid to a solid and when that happens in these little these little um, indentations and capillaries and the space between the patches of um, of these potholes here when that happens all of this breaks out and then we drive over it and it pops out and then there's this huge pothole again and you know just in the blink of an eye you have a cold night when a little bit of frost happens and this uh, you know it can cause these huge craters in the road well the surface of the earth works the same way and there's a lot of weathering processes in the earth that ends up um, causing breaks in, um, in rocks. Weathering is the process of breaks happening where uh, rocks don't change in chemical form. They don't change in, um, in uh, uh, mineral form. They just change in shape and size. And so I don't know if any of you all have ever been driving um, in a place where you see a sign like this. This is a road sign, just a picture from the internet that I googled. But this is if you google falling rock uh, warning signs, you'll see all kinds. Sometimes there'll be a little person standing down here and these rocks coming down or, or you know, just a cliff with a, with a boulder sitting here is the a falling rock warning. You'll see these all through the Boston mountains if you're driving up toward Fayetteville, or you'll definitely see them in the Rockies if you're out um, if you're out in Colorado or Utah, Wyoming, these places, you'll see these kinds of signs because uh, this seeping in of water that happens in a pothole and, and freezing it, expanding it, loosening the rock, this is happening constantly all over the earth, regardless of whether we have a man-made thing like asphalt on the streets. It certainly happens there, but it happens in regular rock also with little, um, little uh, tributaries, little holes, different places in the um, in the stones where water can collect, and then as it freezes, it can it it pops, it it can break. Uh, how many of you have ever put um, some a, a glass bottle, for instance, full of fluid, full of of water into the freezer and let it freeze all the way? You can go back to that container and the water sometimes has has broken it. It has popped that container. That's the same process that we're talking about here that causes things like a rock slide um, from happening. And that's what this chapter is all about. It's about the processes that take place for 
um, not just the overland flow or stream flow of water that we've studied in previous lessons, but there's also particulate. We studied sedimentary rocks in, a, in the, the most previous set of lessons that you've just completed before watching this. And sedimentary rocks, of course, um, are, come, are developed from the pressure and the, um, the uh, temperature change, the pressure change of sediment that is deposited someplace after erosion takes place. And erosion is a process where things are removed from their original location, transported someplace else, deposited, and that deposit you know, becomes characteristic of a new place. That land mass has moved in small pieces to another area. Um, you might have heard of, uh, of all the silt and the, um, the grasslands, the brackish waterlands at the mouth of the Mississippi. Um, it's, it's certainly, if you've ever studied um, U.S. history, you know about the difficulty that French and Spanish explorers had in trying to find the mouth of the Mississippi River anyway, because for miles and miles and miles, the Mississippi River deposits all of the tiny particulate of, of dirt and tiny rocks and even animal parts and, and bones, etc., that washes down the river from the current of the water. And as it gets to the shallow land, it deposits this into the, um, into the ground underneath the river. And, and the mouth of the Mississippi is very, very shallow in a lot of places. And it's definitely spread out for miles and miles and miles. And so a lot of the um, explorers, LaSalle, for instance, uh, wasn't quite sure whether he ever found um, the mouth of the Mississippi on a couple of the treks when he when he tried. Um, his diaries uh, express his frustration with trying to uh, find the the Great Mississippi River. So um, erosion is part of the natural process of change that our Earth goes through. Sometimes erosion, mass wasting, and weathering are caused by um, uh, interaction with the atmosphere. A lot of water from the atmosphere interacts and temperature changes from the atmosphere interact with the surface layers of the earth, but also some of the lava flows um, and some of the volcanic activity within the earth can create internal cavities in the earth, internal caves, or even tiny little pockets of, um, of gas or hollowed out cavities where gases or liquids can um, accumulate and they cause what we call mass wasting or weathering and um, it changes the footprint of our earth. It changes the topography of our earth and so we are studying this chapter to um, try and better understand how some things have changed over time. Some places on the face of the earth have changed over time because of interaction with different parts of different spheres that we study in um, in uh, physical geography. So the lithosphere that we've been focused on this um, this week we are going to look at how does the atmosphere and how does the hydrosphere interact with that, even the biosphere, um, because I have uh, another picture of some um, some weathering that uh, can occur sometimes. I did not take this picture, but how many times have you been on a sidewalk or someplace where a tree has gotten so large that the roots have changed, you know, the, the pavement around it? Tree roots can do this to the side of a mountain in the same way that it can do this to your sidewalk, to the street, to your driveway. And so this is how the biosphere can interact with the lithosphere to make changes over time. These changes are usually quite slow, um, whereas, you know, the pothole thing can happen, um, you know, within one season, something like this type of weathering um, happens much more slowly as the tree uh, grows and gravity acts on the larger and larger object and the and um, the roots spread wherever the roots have space to spread into little tiny cracks and down the sides of a cliff or something. 
And so um, you probably have made many, many observations about this kind of thing um, in your life, and it is part of the physical geography processes that we're studying in this particular chapter. A couple of things that I want to show you, I think I showed you this sinkhole picture just a moment ago. I was clicking on stuff and clicked on this one before I was ready to talk about it. But this is a sinkhole. There was a sinkhole recently. Let me see. I want to say that it was the Saline River maybe that caused it. I'm not really sure what caused it, but in Benton, Arkansas, there's a Walmart and recently part of the parking lot from uh, of the Walmart looked like this picture that's on the screen here that we're looking at. Uh, I don't know that it swallowed any cars, but uh, some of you, if you happen to live in or around Benton, Arkansas, or know anybody who did, they probably remember. I think it was maybe a year ago, not longer than two years ago, when that huge sinkhole was in the Walmart parking lot. And there's all kinds of little tributaries and streams, sub you know subterranean tributaries and streams, I believe, of the Saline River or Hurricane Creek or something that's over there in that area that uh, that the um, geologists who worked with the highway department and worked with the engineers to fill it in and repair that spot, they uh, learned that it was the groundwater flow that um, had caused the sinkhole in that case. This is a current picture. Um, I believe it's in southern Minnesota at the moment, like right now. Um, this house has just recently been condemned because all of a sudden this uh, sinkhole opened up beneath it. You can look online right now for um, a house being condemned in Minnesota um, because of a sinkhole. It happened maybe two weeks ago. And this kind of modification of the landscape, modification of the Earth's surface, is called mass wasting. So when something uh, when huge parts of the earth, such as in this case with a sinkhole, and there's all kinds, you see all kinds of sinkholes, um, uh, pictures, if you, if you search Google images, you'll see huge ones, you'll see, you know, sinkholes that have swallowed entire shopping malls and entire parking lots, not just a couple of, a couple of parking spots. I think it was like five or six parking spots that it, that it, uh, that it swallowed there in Benton, Arkansas recently. Um, but you see, oh yes, this is uh, another example of, it, it's not a sinkhole, this is a landslide, which is another example of mass wasting, where huge parts of the earth are either, well, swallowed in the, in the sinkhole example, or collapse because of weathering issues. And this is, I think only about four months old. I want to say that um, I don't know how many of you have been to Wyoming or been around, been in the Grand Tetons, but this is the Grand Teton Pass in Wyoming, a picture from the Wyoming Transportation Department. You can see it began, um, you can you can find uh, pictures where all you see from the drone are these cracks, like my cursor is following here, um, where the road was weakening, but then all of a sudden, uh, while the road was still in use, this landslide occurred, and you can see all just all of it's gone. I mean, you see the barrier to the interstate, you know, uh, all down here in at the bottom of the cliff. This happens all the time when there are fluctuations in um, in drainage and rainfall. You can have landslides. We we might know about landslides most commonly from he hearing news about mud slides in California. California is for the last couple of decades has been a very very dry place. But in the 1980s, um, it just rained and rained and rained and rained. There were patterns constantly bringing um, bringing rainfall flow in from the Pacific Ocean and just dumping in California and you heard about mudslides all the time and then for a couple of decades it's been really really dry and the drought has increased and gotten worse and gotten worse and then in the last two or three years in California two or three seasons at least uh, they've had again just drenching rains and a lot of the drought conditions that everyone was so um, afraid of. You know, they were rationing ground, uh, rationing drinking water and not letting anybody um, water their lawn if they needed it. You know, you couldn't even flush the toilet as often as you would like. There were there were um, restrictions on that. Uh, so these kinds of human behaviors were a reaction to this drought 
behavior or this drought experience, but now it started to rain again like crazy and all of the reservoirs are filling up and lakes are filling back up, but so is the ground. The ground is saturating and you have houses in California that are on the side of a cliff uh, with a great view, but the cliff is collapsing much like this roadway collapsed. Um, because of the changes in atmospheric moisture, the change in precipitation rates, and the um, the quantity of water that the soil is holding in and of itself. And these processes are super powerful for reshaping the face of the earth. So in this chapter, you've got a ton ton of different vocabulary that describes particular processes of erosion or mass wasting or weathering and how it happens um, over time. Sometimes it's a very quick process, uh, as in the change of seasons and getting, you know, you know, you sometimes hear news stories where people get four years worth of rain in one season because of um, atmospheric conditions just bring that training rainfall over their area. And that kind of thing can cause mass wasting very quickly. Other situations um, uh, cause mass wasting, but it's over a, a huge expanse of time. So for instance, one of the curated videos that you're going to watch is about how the Grand Canyon was formed. I've never been to the Grand Canyon, maybe some of you have, but um, the Grand Canyon was formed through a lot of the processes that are going to be described in this chapter, and you're going to see um, a video about how that was formed. We're also going to see some news videos about some of those mudslides and the condemned houses in California or the sinkholes that you um, that I showed you a picture of. And so this is a short chapter, so you will be uh, you'll be able to whiz right through it. And I think as you do, you'll be able to see some. You'll be able to observe just in your own. Uh, daily life activities, you'll be able to observe some of these phenomenon from, uh, you know, at least this sidewalk kind of thing. You might even have it at your house. I know that my neighbor once needed to redo her whole driveway and take a tree out because it was just too bumpy and, and you know, broke up into potholes, for instance. And then it got really bad when, um, you know, when we did have a cold winter and this froze and the, the potholes, you know, break open and you can fall all the way to the Amazon, I think, <laughs> through some of those potholes in the, in the road by my house after a harsh winter. So I think that if you happen to be someone who still needs an outside source reaction paper, you're going to be able to find a ton of news articles um, and information about these different types of um, weathering or mass wasting situations. A lot of these pictures that I have shown you, like the Grand Teton Pass, that's a current event. That's a very recent event um, that, uh, you know, when that happened, I think it was like in March of 2024, when that happened, if I'm not mistaken. You'll be able to correct me there because um, you'll be able to look it up easily should you choose to do that. If you look up a, a you know, one or two of these types of waste, mass wasting or weathering or erosion events, make sure that you uh, write your reflection journal a little bit on a broader topics than just one particular type of um, erosion or mass wasting or weathering, because you have so many different um, concepts to um, to learn about in this chapter from the slumping of the earth to earth flow or mud flow can happen. There's um, a meteorologist, a, a weather chaser on YouTube named Reed Timmer, and he's got some uh, fantastic uh, mud flow videos from flash flooding. I believe he was in Arizona last spring and had his camera on a stream bed as trees and rocks and mud and all kinds of stuff came flowing down from the side of a hill into this stream bed and it just looked like a wall of mud flowing through this neighborhood and so there's a ton i don't even have to show you um cartoon graphics you know in a video like some of the ones that i've used i've curated for you in previous lessons so that you could have a visual to how all of this um, works you can see um, very clearly in real time when someone was recording it a lot of these phenomenon happening 
So I think that this is um, going to be an interesting, maybe personalized um, set of lessons for you since you can find uh, some of this information that you know has affected you, your family, or your neighborhood, for instance, um, in the past. If you're going into architecture or engineering or urban planning or um, any sort of um, you know parks and recreation, all these different kinds of things, you will have to know about these kinds of processes and what the what the hazards and the risks are for um, the area where you live and work. So I hope that you will text me with questions and I look forward to reading your um, reaction papers about this and we're close to the end of the semester so I hope that you um, don't stress yourself out too much. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Talk to you soon. Bye.